Alright. <clears throat> so here we are. Uh, we left the Willow Emok and uh, <clears throat> now we're headed to the uh, Beaver Kill. It's about a half hour drive from where we were earlier at Wolf's Run. This is a new hole for me. I've never fished this. Yeah, that's part of the fun. Big water. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda read read the water a little bit and see what I like. I really like behind that uh, flat rock out in the middle there. There's uh there's two seams, actually three seams. Two on the far side, one on the near side. It's a little slack board behind it. Again, that rock uh, a little further downstream in the middle. Again, two seams on either side. And right here, close to the bank here. This looks like um, uh, just a little drop off, a little change in the topography. Just creating this little ripple right here. And there's probably some fish holding in some of the slower water. Um, I also see a, a feeder creek coming out on the far side of the highway bridge and I'm betting that's a good spot right in here so I don't know how deep this is from here it looks anywhere from um, you know maybe uh, two to say four maybe five feet in some of the deeper holes but uh, let's give it a shot all right Uh, fall here in the cat's oh, This looks like really good. I'm glad we we're going to fish in that other spot here. Again, there's a little feeder creek coming out right here. And the water looks pretty deep. Um, what I think I'm going to do, there's a bridge that we saw earlier. We were further, further upstream. Um, I think I'm just going to fish this pool by myself for a while. We'll see how it goes. Right, so 
I don't see anything on the surface. But I know there are fish here. In particular, that spot right there. And some of the better trout will just sit and lay in the tailwater of that feeder creek, waiting for food to wash down. And quite frankly, it's so pretty here. I don't even care if I catch a fish. Letting that, <clears throat> letting that streamer drift down in the current. Then giving it a slow retrieve. That's perfect right there. Let's let it sink. See if we get a little bump. There we go. So now I'm using a six weight rod and I'm throwing a, uh, a sculpin pattern, which is basically <clears throat> basically an imitation, a cross between an imitation of a, a bait fish and, uh, and an attractor pattern, which is uh, just something bright and uh, basically attracts the fish. But it doesn't really look like anything natural on the water. I mean, that's right in the sweet spot there, but they don't want to cooperate. Give a couple more casts and then we'll actually move down. Move downstream a little bit more. Oh, there was a bump. Wondering if this cold weather maybe made the fish a little bit lethargic. I know they had some of their coldest attempts last night. Continue to work our way down, down the river. I just happen to like, really like this spot. It's a huge spot. <clears throat> that water is uh, about three, three and a half, four feet where I'm casting it to. I'm standing uh, about thigh high right now. One of the benefits about fishing a streamer this way, although it's not as pretty as dry fly fishing, is that you can really cover a lot of water, uh, especially when you don't know the water. And you don't, really, you don't really know where the fish are laying. They're not really giving themselves away, because obviously we're not seeing surface activity. So, you know, we're almost, this is what I call the carpet bombing uh, the river. And, we're just trying to cover everything. And, you know, I like that far bank. It looks a little bit undercut, a little bit deeper than this side. And it's a little harder to, to, to cast to. Fish usually are aware of that. And therefore, they they stay in those spots because they know they're safe. Plus, there's food coming off those bushes over there. Terrestrials, ants, crickets, spiders. Now the wind laid down, nice, and the sun came out. So it's actually actually quite pleasurable right now. It was a little chilly earlier. And the water is absolutely gin clear. This is 
as clear as I've ever seen the beaver kill. And we are we are a little further north than we usually fish, a little further upstream, so it doesn't silt up or color as much as it does downstream. There's not as much dumping into it. But this is really this is really the first stretch where it starts to open up and get a little bit bigger. Further upstream, it's more of a um, it's more creek-like and stream-like as opposed to river-like. Uh, but it's all pretty. So again, I see a rock out there in the middle. I'm trying to uh, see if I can cover it. And uh, just get in the seam there, where, where that rock is breaking the current a little bit, the fish will lay in there because it's easier for them. They can, uh, they can lay there without having to exert too much effort and still get all the food that passes by. This, this is going to be mostly browns up here. But the whole system does hold rainbows, browns, and uh, and brooks, both uh, stocked and oops and um, wild. So as you can see, I'm actually just kind of working my way down. There's that feeder creek where we started above, and I'm just taking a couple steps, casting, trying to cover as much water as I can. Uh, one thing you do need to be a little careful of when you're fishing water that's, that's uh, uh, I, I call it kind of bony because it is a little thin, meaning it's shallow, relatively speaking. And uh, it's so clear that the fish can really see a long way and they really eat, they, they get really spooky. They have a lot of time to look at the bait for the fly. And if you're not careful waiting, uh, they'll pick you out pretty quick. Again, just trying to get that, that far side of the uh, far, that far bank, far side of the river. And uh, not covered much water. It looks a little deeper down, down, down in there. And what I'll probably do is head down to if you can see that that rock uh, on the far bank where you start seeing the ripple. Yeah, that water looks a little shallow, but it does look like it pools up in front of it. So. What I'll do is I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Go up till we get down there. Not in any rush. I'm just going to take our time and enjoy this beautiful afternoon. Again, in terms of fly fishing, uh, streamer fishing is probably my least favorite method of fishing, but in these conditions it actually is the most effective. And if you can see, I don't know if you can see that, uh, I think I have a leaf, but there's a little, little seam right there where there's a disturbance in the water, and there's probably some submerged rocks there. And again, looks like a sweet spot. So let's see if I can get over there. Right there. And drift down. 
Now I want to pull that streamer through that seam. right there in the water. What it looks like, it looks like there's a gravel bar that's raised a little in the middle of the stream. And then there's a cut on that far, that far third of the river. And, and there's also a cut where I'm standing in. And I would just think that there would be trout running in here somewhere. We'll find it. So here, I guess I'm not even paying attention. This is perfect right in front of me. I think we got one. Finally. Roll call. 